In January this year, Netflix released a true crime documentary on Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker. During the early 80s, he committed some of the most heinous crimes in the state. In the interview with many of the surviving victims and their court appearances, they described his face as being pure evil, quoted as how a cat views a mouse, predatory. Interestingly enough, there's actually a lot of truth to how the victims describe his face as evil. As it turns out, certain human facial features have been linked to making a face appear as more menacing. These are features that indicate high fighting success and testosterone, leading to more aggressive indicators of facial dominance. An example would be facial width to height ratio, where broad, short mid faces are deemed as more intimidating and aggressive compared to tall, narrow ones. What you may not have known is that there are other facial traits that we can subconsciously link to potential psychopathic behavior. This so called dark triad of personality traits can be written on the face. Before we deep dive into the topic, let's look at what the dark triad actually is. Paulus and Williams, 2002, described it as exhibiting psychopathy, Machiavellianism, and narcissism. Psychopathy or psychopathy is described as emotionally cold, impulsive, or antisocial behavior by Hare, 1996, while Machiavellianism is named after its namesake, Niccolo Machiavelli, and is characterized by cynicism, a lack of faith in humanity, and most importantly, a willingness to exploit others for personal gain. Narcissism is associated with a sense of entitlement or an elevated sense of self-worth. Each of these three traits share the same core tenets of callous and manipulative behavior, but the question for our topic still remains. How much of this is actually written on the face, if any? Firstly, why do these traits actually matter? If displaying dark triad behavior was truly disadvantageous, then a true psychopath would be able to mask their behavior for long enough to gain one's trust such as Ted Bundy. If it was truly advantageous, then others would falsely mimic these behaviors to gain an inherent advantage. Past and present findings show that it's actually a bit of both. One particular self-reported study by Jonasson and colleagues in 2009 indicated that men who show more dark triad traits were better at acquiring short-term relationships. In 2015, he elaborated on that with another study indicating that dark triad men are better at acquiring resources, which is what actually makes them attractive. On the other hand, those resources have to come from somewhere, so for every winner, there's a loser. A basic social challenge for all of us are developing ways to detect manipulative behavior to avoid being cheated out on. Early studies on dark triad detection have looked at clothing choices, facial expressions, and body language. In other words, methods of self-expression, However, these studies had too much variability to be a good indicator. What's to say what a psychopath's preferred clothes are? You probably wouldn't be able to tell if they're any good at their job. Instead, craniofacial structure, as strange as they may sound, is a better indicator of detecting potentially harmful strangers, as that is the one facet that cannot be easily changed. To tackle this question, existing research has looked at the dominant spectrum displayed through facial cues. Going back to our initial example, a short wide mid face of a UFC fighter is much more dominant and intimidating than the tall narrow one of say, Benedict Cumberbatch. This has been linked to higher testosterone by Cara Tal 2009 and Pereira Tal 1998, which is partially responsible for increased dark triad behavior. Holtzman 2011 tries to link the face to the personality and finally answer our question. A sample size of around 200 participants were given a personality quiz that's used to detect dark triad traits. From this, the bottom 10 and top 10 for each trait and gender had their faces photographed and composited into a prototypical face to understand similarities. Observers were then brought in, with 64% being women, to identify which faces appear most sinister. The results actually indicate that the guesses were not made at random, with the majority of the observers being in agreement with the same few set of faces. If we compare the least trustworthy composites with the greatest thrill-seeking and most impulsive ones, we start to see some similarity, especially with decreasing trust and increasing impulsivity. These faces are more masculine, angular, and short, which should come as no surprise given the literature on the topic, and we've touched on it partially here in this video. What the results suggest 
is that the detection of these traits is A, not random, and B, not entirely exclusive either. Certain faces showed up more for all three of the traits than others, indicating that the detection of these traits comes as a package. A Machiavellian face that sets off alarm bells would also be classified as a psychopathic or narcissistic one too. Holtzman's paper tries to explain these facial features with one of two hypotheses. The first being that the psychological and physical traits of a person come as a package. For instance, a sharp-faced woman may inherit genes that help her build an angular craniofacial structure, but this comes with dark triad traits as well, perhaps influenced all the way down to a hormonal level during development. The second is that the sharp-faced woman acquired these traits through social experiences, giving the example of women with more dominant or angular facial features rising to leadership positions more readily than those with softer facial features. Her dark triad personality is simply a reaction to her facial features and the way people treat them. Another more relevant example would be developing these traits as a response to overabundant attention, in this case male attention. And so an exploitative attitude towards others is simply a defense mechanism to keep their unwanted attention at bay. Effie Stonem from Skins is one such example, being cold and manipulative due to a distrust in people. This second hypothesis is actually very interesting. The Dark Triad and Mate Choice by Jonasson and colleagues 2015 found that women high in these psychopathic traits preferred short-term partners that were also high in them too. If the second hypothesis is true, then this timeless preference in bad men and women has a lot to do with the amount of attention the subject receives, their quality of social interactions, and to a lesser extent, their facial attractiveness and features. Quite frankly, the features that make men appear more dangerous are the ones that make them also more attractive. That's not to say that everyone prefers these dark triad partners, but if you're going after them, then it's likely that you share some of these traits as well. Prolific killers such as Richard Ramirez and Ted Bundy had diehard groupies and female fans who would follow them in their court hearings, and they would defend their innocence despite being the target group that these killers would actually hunt down. The idea of hybristophilia ties back into dark triad traits and partner selection, because what better way to display psychopathy than to kill? Part of the attraction was due to their crimes, and part due to their dark triad facial features. Men such as Jeffrey Dahmer, Bundy and Ramirez had incredibly well-developed lower thirds with above average facial width and proportion and are not an unusual exception. In the same way that we covered how political leaders and CEOs have above average features in this video, the same applies to the extremes on the other side of the lawless coin. American Psycho puts it best with their typecast of Christian Bale someone who presents the handsome features of both the CEO, or the vice president in this case, but also the psychopathic killer. Both roles require dark triad traits by nature, 